put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. For fire, or if you want to hear me butcher the original, La Guerre du Feu, something like that, mood review. Set 80,000 years ago, a tribe of Homo sapiens are attacked by what I'm pretty sure are supposed to be Neanderthals, and they lose their precious fire. And this was before man knew how to make fire. And so three men of the tribe are sent out to get more fire somehow. The only way they knew that it came about was lightning strikes and volcano eruption, eruptions. And I suppose that is really about what I should say about the plot. I should start by saying that this is a movie that is going to offend a lot of people as it already has, it came out in 81. It's brutally honest about some things about human beings and our past 80,000 years ago and some people are just going to be absolutely disgusted by that. Some people are going to watch the opening few seconds and turn it off. This has people eating stuff that it's food, it's just not what we would eat. It has sexual situations that don't ally with our norms and so on and so forth. So just putting that out there. This is a fantastic film. You really immerse yourself into this world, or the film immerses us in this world, where really having fire is just vital, literally. It's life itself, because for one thing it can, you know, you can cook food with it, which gives more options and makes it easier with the whole food thing, but it can also keep you warm during long, harsh winters, and sometimes that is the difference between life and death. And so, I mean, that, that literally is it. The entire movie is these three people from the tribe trying to get fire, keep it, and return to their tribe with it. And that, I don't know, I imagine to a lot of people that doesn't sound very interesting. And to a lot of people it won't be interesting. But if you allow yourself, if you're at all interested in primitive man, then this is going to be right up your alley. And if you are comfortable with looking past, you know, societal norms of today and seeing other cultures and other ages, then also this is, this might interest you. But yeah, you just completely get into how 
important it is for them. And the movie... It, it builds up really well, the tension. It's a really tense film. It's 93 minutes, not counting the credits, and though there are portions of it that are slower than others, it can be incredibly tense when it means to be. You, you really feel the danger of certain situations. And in all situations regarding this fire, which really is the, the main sort of drive of the plot, you just, you're, you're terrified of this fire going out and, yeah, just these, and, and there are, of course, there are a number of different situations that these three tribesmen go through that threaten them and or the fire. And I keep referring to them as the three tribesmen. I don't... They have character names, technically, but they're not... They're not made clear to us in the film. That's another thing that's going to throw a lot of people off. There is not any... any language that we understand, any verbal language that we understand in this movie. I think technically they are speaking a language. Actually, I think it's like Anthony Burgess, who wrote A Clockwork Orange and who also created a language for that, created a language for this movie. And so they are speaking, but you never know exactly what they're saying. You have to rely on sort of contextual clues and the visual language, which is very... It, th this movie has excellent communication and it really... it goes very far in showing the potential of film as a visual medium. There are a few times where you're not sure what, why exactly someone is doing what they're doing or what exactly is happening but most of the time, you can, you can tell, you, you, can, you can guess, you can infer. And uh, of course you have to think. It, it's a movie that makes you think. If you're not thinking during this movie, you, you won't comprehend a substantial amount of it. And so it... It's almost interactive in that way, and there are almost times where you could really debate what exactly, why exactly did they do this or that, and such. Although, a lot of it, if you know about primitive culture, then it, it falls very much in line with that. And that's another thing, this is a movie that is extremely respectful of primitive culture, without glorifying it. This is not like the Avatar Dances with Wolves, where basically there's something, there, there's a lot of positive and almost no negative to this primitive people. This is primitive people, for good or for bad. And it's also a very authentic movie. There are a few things that feel a little... I mentioned the plot summary that the tribe is attacked by what I think are supposed to be Neanderthals. I'm not sure they quite looked like what ne excuse me, Neanderthals were supposed to have looked like. Then again, I'm not entirely sure if they knew in 81, that that wasn't... I might have to double check that, but... It's... That there's almost nothing in this that doesn't ring true to what... And, and one, one, sort of the one thing that's... 
I suppose you could say almost glaring, is that these are not, you know, they're not black. The, the, there are some black people in the cast, but there are several that are Caucasian and the like. But, as far as I know, they did not know that in 81, that they should have been black, so the movie gets a pass on that. And, by the way, other than that, I mean, they look filthy. The hair and the skin, the teeth... And, and the makeup, their, their faces, you know, it's, they, they applied all these prosthetics to make them look like really early Homo sapiens, except for maybe Ron Perlman. Sorry, that's mean. And, yeah, it, it's just unflinching reality. There's also these... You know, it opens with this, or almost opens with a battle, and it's very brutal. It's borderline feral. It's like they're not playing nice. It's constant use of dirty tricks. And that's because this really is just life or death. There's no, like, honorable, you know, it's not look your opponent in the eye and, you know, be, yeah, n none of that crap that came in later, you know, much, much, much later in history when <laughs> war wasn't always necessary and there was maybe also some, <sighs> that, that you, you were sort of proving something with morale and, and such. In this fight, it's just live or die. And, yeah, so if, I don't know, I don't really want to give too many of the details away because this is a movie of just excellent details. No, I, I, I won't really give anything away, but just anything that it makes, you know, any, any exposed area, anything that really makes sense to attack, they attack. And it doesn't look nice. It doesn't, you know, it makes you sit there and flinch, and that's, yeah, that's reality. It especially was back then. And actually, on the subject of details, the, the movie actually has one sequence so full of excellent details and such just, just brilliant little ideas and just su such excellent communication of, of just the harsh reality of life from back then that my father actually could recall it in near perfect detail and describe it to me roughly 25 years after he watched it. And he is in his late 60s. So I think that pretty well right there speaks for how just this, this quality of it, of being true to life and full of excellent details. And the... The... The various locations that they go through, although there is admittedly some lack of clarity as to where it's taking place and they seem to maybe go from one geographic sort of location to another as in you know distinctly different locations 
but other than that, it's also extremely real. None of this feels like it was shot on like a sound stage or something. In fact, I think actually the entire movie might be shot outside on actual locations. I, I can't... I, there, there might be a few things that are done on stages, but the, the majority of it is just real. Body language and sort of the the actual verbal language that they have in the movie is extremely convincing and sort of very just natural. It it feels like it it would be how primitives would communicate the and also just it's it's a feat by just by itself that this actually has people speaking this what is essentially to them gibberish they they might have known what it meant but still it would and I guess it would be like learning a foreign language and they're they're speaking it passionately. The acting is fantastic throughout. The, I, I can't think of a single bad performance. It's it's just extremely real. It, it, some, some scenes almost feel like they just filmed actual primitive tribes. I mean, they, I, it it isn't that. It's but but it it feels like it. They have an astounding number of different sort of facets of life, of just dif different situations, life, death, sexuality, and it just treats them all with honesty, and, and they have these different situations where it, it's, it feels like it's something that could have happened, or you know, did happen back then, the, the kind of thing that did happen back then. And there, there are times where you can sort of figure out what's going to happen next, because it's sort of the, it's, it's the thing that would make sense for there to happen. And that's also something, one of the strengths of this movie, it doesn't really have twists as such. It just has natural developments. I mean, you, you won't necessarily figure out everything that happens, certainly not everything in the movie, you know, some total. But, yeah, just, it feels natural when something new happens. It's like something that you could imagine would happen there. The movie does have a conventional sort of story structure. It has beginning, middle, and end, and you do follow the same characters throughout. It doesn't suddenly change perspectives or anything like that. And so with this in place, and, and in fact some of the sort of overall story elements are fairly conventional as well, and with that, what we can focus on, what our energy, energy can be spent on, is just taking in these events that make sense, and, and spending our energy on trying to figure out what exactly is happening why someone is doing what they're doing and what they're trying to do. Because again, these things are not entirely clear. The music is fantastic. It feels, it has this sort of primitive feel to it. This very primal 
almost feel to it. And it really fits with the different moods of the film. It, it can be very commanding and very fierce in tense scenes and it can be more solemn. Excuse me. I suppose that more or less covers it. I want to mention especially the performance of Ray Dong Chong, who was also in Commando, and as I've learned since doing the Commando review, of course, also in The Color Purple. Yeah, I really don't know how I missed that. Anyway, she is phenomenal in this movie. If any performance is sort of a little standout performance, it would be hers. And it's, it's just this complete, this, this ability to move outside and, and remain outside of societal norms of today that is astounding and she is utterly convincing in every scene but I will not give away exactly what she appears as the movie is also quite well paced there was a period in the last third where I felt like it was slowing down a little but what it really boiled down to was that what was the, the motivation was unclear of one of the characters and once that cleared up it picked back up again I would maybe say as another negative, there is a, a bit much that happens to our main characters and it's sort of the thing of a lot of mainstream movies where they just they're still alive and kicking after a lot has happened where it sometimes seems like it, it, it's not terribly bad in this but there are a few situations where you feel like the outcome was dictated by you know main character immortality kind of thing but yeah that covers it pretty well. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.